Greetings and welcome, my name is Aaron Craig, and in this Game Maker Studio 2 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a full party walking system along a grid. Now, this is going to build directly upon my previous video where I gave you a grid walking system for a single player, and this is going to just have all the changes necessary to have it be in a party. So I'm going to explain what some of those changes are, but you'll be able to download this project in the comments below, and then you can just compare the code if you just want to see for yourself exactly what's changed and how you would need to implement it in your own game. So first off, I added a couple more sprites for the players and renamed them so that they're a little more helpful names than the original project. Same thing for the objects. And inside of each of the objects, I needed to come in and actually set the walk animations for each one. So the init walking I set for player one because that's just what I did. So I set each of their sprites for there. After that though, I needed to come in and manually set them inside of their create event after calling init walking. And so this is kind of like uh, inheriting from a parent where this would be the inherit code, and then you set the specific properties in that child. I did that for each one, and except for OBJ player one, the rest of them do not have a step event. And that is because the step event is the actual grid walk that we need to come in and set up. So let's come in and take a look at this because that's all the code that you need to call inside of your objects. After that, you have to come in and do it all inside of here. Let me show you really quickly what it looks like and then I'll explain to you how it works. So we've got four objects. Each one is gonna move along the grid and the ones behind them are going to follow the one in front. Now, remember on the right, I have a unique sprite that changes when they move to the right and each character is going to change that animation when they then move to the right and they only change their animation when they're actually moving that direction. So as soon as that one moves down, it changes its sprite and so on and so forth. So it's really cool, really versatile and works really well in my opinion. I've been able to pretty much iron out all the bugs and so I'm giving you a final product that works really well. Okay. Walking controls are pretty much the same. I just made these local variables. That's the only difference that I did. Collision checking didn't actually change a thing. So that's exactly the same as it was before. Inside here is where we get to the changes. Now we are gonna start using this 0.5 case right down here because now we wanna actually use this case to change all of the global player parties. And I'm not sure I mentioned that. The one thing, the one big thing I changed in here was I actually made a player party array global. And I set each object to the spot that I wanted in. If you want them in a different spot, just change the spots. And right now you'd have to go in and manually move these guys around. But if you wanted to have dynamic creation, that's pretty easy too because they are all in an array, so you just create each one and set it to be in the right spot. I did change the walk distance to 64, simply because these sprites are 64 by 64 and they're really large, and it looks real strange if they are on top of each other, but that's all I did inside of here. Okay, back to, oh, where'd it go? Back to the grid walk. So now we're using the 0.5 case and we're setting each of the objects in the player party to stop moving and stop animating when no key is being pressed. That's the change in the keys up here. Then we come down here and this is all still inside of the switch statement. So if a key, so if current speed is equal to zero, so we're running through this and then all of this down here is inside of this if statement. And that's important because when the current speed is greater than zero, we're gonna go through and set each of the players in the global player party to then move in the right direction. The really cool thing about this whole system I've set up is that it doesn't have to be four players. You can actually have it be almost an unlimited amount between two and whatever number you want. Four is the traditional like JRPG number of party members you have, so that's what I went with. But you can easily come inside of here delete the fourth player, set the fourth in the fourth player in the array to null, and if we run that, 
it'll actually run just fine because it doesn't matter how many it has because it's using array length 1D the whole time to check to see uh, how many there are and then it does something based on that, which I think is really cool. So we check to see if our current speed is greater than zero, which it is if we've pressed any key at all. And then we set our player object one because that's the only guy actually activating this code. And that's important because otherwise you would have all of your objects running this code and then they would move four times as fast as they should. So the player one sets these two properties and then player one says set them for the rest of them. So we go through the array length of our player party. We save that in a local variable for easier access. And then we come in and we get their X and Y coordinates, uh, the direction to move based on the X and Y coordinates of the player right below them. That way we know who they're following. And then based on that coordinate, we do a little bit of direction checking and we set their current direction right up, left or down. And then we start animating that specific player because this is all inside of a for loop. And then inside of the actual movement, it's almost exactly the same code, except that we say with global player party and we go inside of them. And then we check to see if their current speed is greater than zero. And if it is, then we do the same code that we had before to just move them along the correct direction. And that's really about it. This system took me a really long time to set up and figure out, but I want to share it with you because I think it's really cool and it might benefit some people who are looking to put it into their games. Now, this is all going to be covered in depth in my upcoming advanced turn-based combat course, which is going to be launching in one week. So mark your calendars. It's going to be March 16th is going to be the launch date for a whole lot of things. You may have seen already that I am doing a little bit of rebranding and I'm going to cover that more in depth in a little bit, but I'm going to be changing my channel name. I'm going to be launching a new website where you can access all of my courses and I'm going to be having all of that ready to go in one week. I'm really excited. I'm going to keep making tutorials this week, putting up updates on what that looks like and all of the changes that you can expect. But I want to also keep making tutorials and putting useful stuff out there. So. I hope this is helpful. If you want to see anything else, anything different, then just let me know what that is and what you would like to see, and I will add that to my list to work on. So that's what I've got for you. Thanks for joining me, and as always, have fun making great games, and I'll talk to you later.